Can everyone hear me? Uh, wait for it. Still sharing the coffee on mine. Yeah, it's back. Hooray! We're back up and running. I think. It's Give frozen. Uh, it's back. Yeah, we're back, Heath says. Yay! Awesome. Right. Oh, I'm not half again. Sorry about that, folks. Anyway, you find yourselves in the uh, incense and herb smelling tent of Madame Astra. Who What's up, looks, babe? Looks to you and says, Cross my palm with a single silver coin, and I shall read your future. Okay, babe. Best surfer, dude. That's all I got. So, give her one silver. And she starts waving her hands in a vaguely mysterious and magical manner around the crystal ball. Um, can you just make me a perception check, please? 18. You notice that her leg appears to be moving kind of rhythmically. And as you look over the side, you can see a little set of bellows just under her one foot. That seems to be making the mist inside of the crystal ball swirl in a magical and mysterious manner. <laughs> and she looks at you and says, Hmm, you have had a, a troubled past. You, you carry a great responsibility. Yeah, I'm leader of the Wave Riders, yo. Oh, yes, very responsible to be a leader, yes. I will answer you three questions about your future. Now that I have connected through to the web of time, I see your future laid out before me, but I am bound to only answer you three questions. What are they? <laughs> Uh, when am I next going to get laid next? Mm, she continues to move her hands around the crystal ball. You see the, the legs start switching a little bit more furiously now. She goes, ah, I see the promise of a relationship in your future. Soon. Is she fit? Second question. The uh, furious leg twitching starts up again. The Mists start swirling a bit more, a bit more furiously. Mm. Oh, she is quite attractive, yes. Uh, when am I going to meet her? Mm, let me see. She looks deeper, deep into the ball. And then she all of a sister. sudden, both of her hands just slam down on the table and her head snaps back and she screams into the ceiling. She then locks you and her eyes have gone completely silver. And she looks dead into your eyes and just says, Eyes of red follow your path. Masks hide the truth. Enemies from beyond will walk this land once again. And then slumps forward and sits up and just continues like nothing has happened. You okay, babe? She will be quite attractive, yes. Okay. Bye. Thank you. And she leans, leans forward and <laughs> shouts out of the tent, Next customer, please! I'm going to come out and be like, waste of time. I'm going to go in. I want to know. I'm going to change back into Faye. Okay. Um, disappointed once. I am not being disappointed again. So, Badrak, as you make your way into the fortune teller, Madam Astra goes, please. Cross my palm with a single piece of silver and I shall reveal your future and fortune. I just it's get a piece of silver and rub it on her palm. All attractions are five copper pieces, so she's ripping you off. She didn't say give it to her, she just said rub her palm with it, so I'm just going to rub her palm with it. Excellent, excellent. You indeed have silver on you. Now give me one silver coin and stop dicking me around. 
<laughs> She's not very smart, is my problem. Uh, right, yeah, I gave it to her. I'll give it to her. Thank you. She eyes you kind of suspiciously and just goes, mm. <laughs> Oh, I see you are a warrior. Great strength of arms. I see you once hit a man with a fish at a distance. Yes. <laughs> That is unusual and certainly a first for what the ball has told me. <laughs> you may ask me three questions about your future. Uh, answer me these questions three, eh? Yes. <laughs> three questions. <laughs> oh. Mm. Will we get any good food tomorrow? <laughs> she stares into the crystal ball and says, Ah, good food is always available somewhere tomorrow. Your second mm. question, please. <laughs> Where do they hide the safe in this place? Says, no cash is left on the premises overnight. <laughs> what is your third question? Uh, why shouldn't I burn it to the ground, this place, and just take everything? She's like trying to look into the crystal ball, but she's clearly becoming concerned by the line of inquiry you're going down. Much of the carnival is flame retardant, and you would have a really hard time to start a fire before the authorities were warned if they've not already been alerted. Sandra, Sandra. <laughs> this is rubbish. I punch the crystal ball and walk out. Oh my god. <laughs> Uh, can you make me a strength check, please? Oh no. <laughs> this is not 20, isn't it? <laughs> no, it's only 10. So, uh, yeah, as you stand up, you just punch the crystal ball and send it skittering across the room. Um, and you can see that there is... Uh, there's now smoke just spilling out onto the table <laughs> from this little hose that's sticking up through the middle. Mm -hmm. He's like, you okay. can leave now. No more customers Bye. for the next 10 minutes. <laughs> I'm on a break. Sandra, Sandra, my drink. My drink, Sandra. So, um, uh, a, a younger halfling woman just comes up and puts a on-break sign over the, uh, the announcement board out the front. Um, is there anything else you'd like to check out, folks? Shall we go to said the... So, it said some fan. On the flyer. Refreshments? Carousel? Hooker Drake? The, the flyer said, plus many more. I wanted the plus many more. Well, it seems Faye's looking for a Hooker Drake. <laughs> okay. Um, okay. So, Faye, no Dragon. Hooker, hooker Drake. As in Dragon. I need Dragons. I need more dragons. So, um, the Hooker Drake stand is a large uh, 10 foot wide barrel of water and bobbing in it are these little wooden dragons with a little metal loop built into their back and the attendants standing there So, oh, Hooker Drake folks prize every time, 5 copper can I hook a Drake? C certainly, uh, sir and or madam. Don't don't see many robots. Uh, five copper, please. You got it. Done. So they take your five copper and they hand you a pole with a little hook on the end. And I need you to make me uh, three... Dex sleight of hand checks, please. Really? That's just careening. 
I got a 10 and a 12 and a 5. Okay. Good so you sort of get the weight of the uh, the hook and you sort of watch the, the, the dragons bobbing around in the little pool and you sort of go for one and think, no, maybe not that one. You go for another one and think, no, no, maybe not that one. The third one catches your eye and you just hook it straight up and out and the attendant goes, oh, well done, well done and takes the uh, takes the drake off the uh, the end of the hook and has a look on the bottom and goes, oh, well, congratulations, you win one of the big prizes and indicates, again, a selection of giant stuffed toys. <laughs> believe this what have we got i need a dragon uh there is a dragon there is a giant stuffed dragon is it big enough for me to ride no given your height it's probably like i say it's probably about the height of maybe the uh, best part of your torso how is how is this meant to replace Atticus? seriously it's it's just a just a cuddly dragon sir or madam all right i will take the dragon. They hand you over one cuddly dragon. Anybody else? Yeah, I'm gonna love you and cuddle you and squeeze you. <laughs> Anybody else for the hooker drake? Nah. Nah. Um, That's it. You guys wouldn't take any clues. Reveling in the childishly joyous sight of uh, Mage Mac, this six foot six robot cuddling a stuffed dragon, whilst the mechanical dragon on his shoulder looks on with a slight amount of envy. Um, you hear the ringmaster striding around announcing, Everyone, take your seats for the main event! And you can see that people are now starting to file into the big top. Let's follow these guys. Yes. Oh, yeah. Do that. Yeah. Woo! Uh, as you make your way into the big top, you are hit with a strong smell of like sawdust. Um, and everyone breathing roughly the same air five or six times over. Um, it smells like home. Ugh. Yeah. Um, it's quite a sizable tent. Uh, large enough to actually have uh, two tiers of seats. And you have a look around. You manage to make your way down to... There are actually, conveniently, five spare seats right at the front row on the ground level. This is convenient. This is almost as if someone wrote it. And you... I was going to say, it's as if the tourists heard a giant robot saying, I'm sitting at the front. <laughs> it's okay, guys. I don't need to sit on the seat. I could sit uh, on the floor and sit perfectly uh, fine. As you... <laughs> Take your seats, Mage Mac. You feel a tap on your shoulder. Yes. And as you turn around, you just see uh, a small boy tapping your shoulder. Is that his chair? Excuse me. Excuse me. Is you a paladin? I, I am not a paladin. No. What? I am a mech warlock. What's a mechwalock? Mechwalock. <laughs> it's like a mech and a warlock, but it's a mechwalock. Starts poking. Sometimes. Your, starts poking at your chest armor. Is this your clothes? This is. Yeah, that's me. Wow. I, I am metal. Okay, bye. He sits bye. Back down and starts talking to a little girl next to him, and they're like really excited to see you. I hope and, I'm saying that way. Uh, kind of, but they're small <laughs> enough that they can just sort of look around. You. Anyway, uh, a hush falls, and there is a drum roll, and the ringmaster strides out. It says, Ladies and gentlemen, and all outside and in between, welcome to Vasily Goldtooth's Copper Carnival main event. We will astound you with sights you have not seen. A feast for the eyes and the senses. First up, our amazing acrobatics team. 
and there's a round of applause and the troop of acrobats walk out and spend the next few minutes performing what uh, James you are convinced that they may have some sort of flight assistance the way that they are moving in the air is fluid and graceful and there's a few heart dropping moments where you think one's going to fall but then another one swings in and catches them and after the performance is finished they all make a safe landing in the center of the ring and stand up and graciously accept a very very loud round of applause from the uh, from the crowd i'm just going to uh, nudge relaxy over there and go i bet they've never ridden one of those trapeze things with a sickle though and took out a load of modrons yeah. nope. <laughs> Oh, what a bunch of bitches. <laughs> Reverting so. back to our, obviously, our beautiful log trap. <laughs> oh, yeah. That was good. Next, be astounded by our magnificent Beast Master. Oh, my God. Hang on. Sorry, I'm going to leave this up a second. And a half orc strides out wearing um, a fairly functional fitting leather armor and carrying a whip, and as they crack the whip to one side, an owlbear bursts out of the curtain at the edge of the ring. And he guides them around, has them sit, stay, carry them on, carry him on their back, and do a few more stunts. Yeah, pretty much. We're looking, we're looking like a green Conan at this stage. And again, the performance goes on a few minutes later. They stop and they take a bow and they give a signal and the owlbear also bows. Everyone's like, oh, yeah, it's very impressive. Very wonderful. And the ringmaster steps back out again. Now, please present the talent contest. And from the curtain side of the stage you can see people start parading out and Faye you, you can see that they are all carrying these like odd items that you've spotted around the place there's people mm -hmm. with flower arrangements and topiary and carvings and paintings and some of them are singing, some of them are dancing all of them in some way performing and demonstrating a talent of, of which they're incredibly proud and it's at this point you see that a spotlight has swung up into the higher reaches of the top and in a viewing box arrayed on a large pile of cushions is the same terribly overweight goblin that you'd seen previously. And you know this to be a silly gold tooth, the owner of the carnival. He looks down and smiles quite broadly and you can see the light catching off of his teeth which appear to be made of solid mm. gold as he looks down and surveys the uh, performers in front of him his expression suddenly changes and looks further out into the crowd and holds up a hand for silence all of a sudden the music stops, the performers stop, everything goes quiet. He points out into the crowd and just says, I see you out there, you deep-dwelling bastard. These people are not for you to take. And then mm. just leaps off the pile of cushions. There's this gasp from the audience as they think he's going to just suddenly plummet to his death. And about halfway through the air, he freezes and starts hovering. And you can see a the point directly below him on the ground. This sawdust is starting to whip up into this like cyclone. It builds and builds and builds and travels up and meets with his feet and then starts spinning Vasily himself in the air. And as it does, you can see his form begins to grow and shift. The clothing, the, the odd turban and the, the waistcoat also growing along with him. The skin starts to darken and take on a much more bluer hue. And where you would expect to see his legs has now just become this swirling vortex of mist. And as the wind starts to die down, you can just see this very 
powerfully muscled, to a certain degree quite pretty, male figure with dark black beard points out to the crowd and says, these are my people, and claps his hands. And all of a sudden there is this rushing of wind as you can feel this cyclone building through and around the tents. And there is a sudden blinding white light and you can't see, you can't hear. And you can no longer feel the pull of gravity and you feel suddenly weightless. And that's where we're going to take I... a break. So, we will be back in about 10 minutes or so, and we will see you then. Cheerio. See you then!
and welcome back everybody. So, uh, you have just experienced a strong gust of wind, you've lost your senses, and you now find yourselves coming to, and your eyes are a little bit strained because uh, where you were in a well lit but nonetheless dim carnival tent. Uh, you are now surrounded by bright daylight. As you look around, you see all around you is a completely blue open sky with no sign of a no sign of the sun anywhere. The ground around you is uh, very elegantly part of an elegantly tiled courtyard that stretches away in front of you to a large ornate fountain. Either side are um, rich green gardens with a variety of flowers and um, topiary hedges shaped to look like various strange wild animals with wings, some vaguely reminiscent of dragons, others of large eagles. And beyond that is an enormously ornate palace with these huge marble columns, golden minaret-topped spires, and a huge, uh, looks like brass and oak door. As you further look around to see what lies beyond the palace and the gardens, you don't see anything. In fact, it appears that the ground outside of the immediate area around the palace just stops. And as your eyes become slightly more accustomed to the light, you can see off in the distance are large chunks of rock just floating somewhere out in the firmaments. What do you like to do? I presume I can move around quite easily, seeing as I can fly, and yeah, this sounds can... an awful lot like we are in... <laughs> do, do I recognise it as not being on the material plane anymore? Um, make me a history check. Ah, oh, fuck. Six. Okay, so... You're definitely getting that we're not in Kansas anymore <laughs> sensation. And... Elements of what you're looking at seem very similar to stories that your... Uh, your grandfather once told you about um, the Aracopran's original homeland in the Plain of Air. You yourself were okay. born in the material plane, so you've never experienced this. And after the cataclysm, you know that the boundaries between the realms were sealed. Okay. I'll convey to you this that I, I think it might be that we've left the material realm and maybe in the realm of air, but I am by no means certain. Mm -hmm. Um, I just what's everyone else doing? Are they just like bumbling around, sort of floating all, in the air? So you've all woken up. You're all standing quite firmly on the ground. You right. You know, the the sensation of weightlessness has has ceased, and you're certainly feeling that like you can walk around quite easily. There, you do feel a little bit a little bit lighter than usual, a little bit floatier. But as you sort of stand up and move around. You don't have any issues moving. Did I fall uh, asleep, Ian, as my character can't sleep? He just shuts down. I um, don't sleep either. I know that's my other so much, character. 
it wasn't so much a sensation of sleeping. It was for you more of a, a sensory overload. So whilst you didn't lose consciousness, you you felt your your new mechanical form just struggle to process this absolute vast wave of sensations that overcame you. The sudden change in gravity, the sudden blinding white light, the mm -hmm. general kind of interference of magic around your body. Um, it wasn't enough to, like I say, you, you, you can't lose consciousness, but you certainly lost kind of perspective and were, were definitely briefly blinded by the transition. I'm just fumbling around. I haven't got a clue what's going on. Is it just us there, or is it everyone in the tent? It is literally just the five of you. That you can see. <gasps> Standard. Is the goblin dude he... here as well, did you say? He was... Yeah. Either in his corpor corpulent self or that sort of weird blue acid thing he turned into. There is mm. no sign of Vasily or any other occupants around you. Is there like an obvious way to go now we to can put see that? that the... I don't expect a big sign, but something. Well, the path uh, directly in front of you leads around the fountain and straight towards these enormous doors on the front of the palace. Um, there are smaller side okay. paths that go off onto the gardens on either side of the, the main causeway. Are there any... I presume there are windows of some form or another? Weirdly, there don't appear to be any windows. It's just like solid block tower thing. Yeah, it's doors the at the bottom. windows. Yeah, it's just a solid stone edifice. <laughs> I, f um, I feel like we should just go to the door. Yeah, I was yeah, going to say, uh, we just I go think forwards. We I'd love to walk to a light. I'm in the door. Mm -mm. Okay. Yep. What um, are you doing? As you approach the door, um, James, you can hear um, voices from inside. Okay. Just a, a general sort of Hub and motion, and I can't overall, hear anything. Over all of this, you hear uh, Vasily's voice louder than the others, saying, "Calm them down and take them away to their quarters." All right. Um, does it sound like they're moving closer towards the doors? Make me an investigation check. Uh, nine. You, as you get a little bit closer to the door, you can hear just the general shuffling of feet. Um, but the 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 general chit chat has died down. Um, okay. in addition to um hearing this from being close to the door, you also notice that both doors have incredibly large um keyholes on one on each door just below these enormous ornate brass ring handles okay is the door is this a massive door like the giant walk through it the door is probably about 30 35 feet tall at its at its center point it's sort of two clearly two panels that meet at an arch at the top i'm going to say about yeah. 35 feet tall at its highest point and how high up are the door handles and key knot and whatnot? Um, they're probably just above head height for you. Right, so it's probably a giant's house then, is what I'm getting at. The key, yeah. So the handles are, like I say, just above head height. The keyholes themselves about eye level. Can I fly up and stick my my beak, no pun intended, um, through the keyhole? See whether I can see something. You wouldn't need to fly, like I said. The keyhole for you is about eye level. Oh, okay. Can I see anything? Uh, yeah. Um, as you look through the keyhole, your your vision is not great. You can't see uh, a massive amount of the room beyond. What you can see is this large chamber with um, pillars 
along either side and at the far end is um, this enormous ornate throne with heavy um, cushions on it, a, um, a small table off to the side with something on it you can't quite make out. But what you can see quite clearly is this enormous muscular blue skinned figure of Vasily just sort of sat what? with one hand on his thigh and just the other hand stroking his beard so looking very contemplative would my little a dragon sneak be able to get through the keyhole um i'd say yes yeah atticus 2.0 certainly has um sufficiently slim figure to maneuver its way to try and see if we can find some things in there that we might need or that'll just give us a bit more information yeah certainly do um do i recognize what oh, i've forgotten his name vasily vasily the dude's name vasily do i recognize what vasily is because when you say big and blue i think of like jotunheim i'm assuming it's um Make me another history check, please. Um, whilst you're doing that, Mage Mac, how are you investigating with Atticus? Fuck me. Um, through, like... So if he goes through, I can see what he's seeing. Yeah, because I think with your new mechanical form, you have a slightly different bond. Yep, 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 familiar, yep, yep. Don't you? Um, let me just... Extras grab your character sheet and just remind myself how that works. Telepathic bond. While the messenger is on the same plane of existence, uh, it can magically convey what it senses to its master, and the two can communicate telepathically. Okay, fantastic. So yeah, you deploy Atticus through the keyhole. Um, can you just make me a stealth check for Atticus 2.0, please? Um... Is it just stealth, is it? Or? Um, so, if you do exclamation R 1d20 plus 3. D20 uh, plus. Is it plus 3 or just. just no, yeah, I would have to. Plus 3, yeah. So Atticus has 14. a plus 3 dex modifier. Actually, no, sorry, he gets a plus 5 to stealth. My mistake. Um, so, Ooh. that would be a 16. 17. Uh, 15. 16. 16. No, 16, 16 sorry. 16, sorry. 16. Yeah, my maths is not Wait. working at all this week. So with that, Atticus makes his way in, and you get the um, uh, sort of feedback images coming from him. You can see that along this room there are um, six pillars going down, three on either side. Um, you can see a... Um, group of individuals who uh, just make me a quick investigation check please for yourself not for Atticus because you're trying to understand the information you're being fed six okay that's fine um, you don't recognise any of them in, uh, as individuals but you recognise that they are wearing the same clothing that you saw um, the people paraded out for the talent show at the carnival were wearing and they all seem to be carrying the same sort of odd assortment of um, artifacts. Guiding them off to the side of the room is what looks like a this large, swirling, almost like white cloud figure. It looks like the 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 top half of a a, a humanoid torso. It's carrying this massive massive scimitar um, but down anywhere below the waist is just this swirling vortex of cloud and wind and at the back of the room again you see uh, Vasily sat on this enormous throne he appears to be quite deep in thought and next to him on the table you can see that this little this little table stand has got this very ornate jeweled bottle on it. Um, James, your history check 
again, recalling the stories that your grandfather handed down to you, Vasily's appearance seems very, very in keeping with uh, the stories that your grandfather told you of the genies that lived on the elemental plane of air. Oh, okay. I can't remember any specific details, um, but you did used to enjoy the stories. They were always very fun. So what would you like to do? Can I see anything like in the vicinity? Like not looking for anything in particular, but just anything that looks like it might be useful to help us understand a bit more what the crack is going on. Um, so if you can also make me an investigation check, please. I uh, will say you're, you're peering through the other keyhole that is not currently occupied by uh, James. <laughs> James's face. Um. I'll move over so you can have a butcher's. Um, it's really, do we try and sneak in the door or do we like kick the door open and go, surprise fuckers, and just attack them? I always lean towards the latter. Um, but yeah, I got a 10, so uh, let's go with the surprise fuckers one. <laughs> okay, so with an investigation check of 10, you don't really glean any more information than James was able to. Okay. Peering through the door. Great. Right. Do we just, does everyone want to just yeah. open the door and try? Hell yeah. Can we sneak Can we sneak past the door? So would we be able to open it and sneak in? So pretty you know cool. that the the door is in the direct line of sight of Vasily at the back of the room. Then uh, I think... Some fries. You know, as, as, as a massive metal unit, I should definitely be able to stealth in them. I mean, bust it open. Right. Should we just swing the door open and march in then? Let's go. Yeah. I'm Let's do my this. Crossbow ready. Don't be for silly. Okay. <laughs> Magnificent. Inspiration if you didn't already have it. I've already got it, my friend. But I'll take double. Or I'll mm. give it to Mage Mac. I've got it. I got some earlier for standing up when he told me to stand up. I remember, so. I remember. I remember. Okay. I remember you being retarded today, Dave. Okay. He's really dropped so. standards for getting inspiration. If stand up, I stand up. Inspiration. <laughs> <laughs> hey man, they're not uh they're not hard criteria to meet in these. If Tom laughs, inspiration. Yeah, that's fair. That's fair. Okay, so uh we we're we're breach and clearing on Zulu, yeah? Yep. Yeah. Okay, Open so door and who is going in first? Who's actually doing the breaching and entering? Mage Mac. Oh. <laughs> me. I'm a it's big old metal sure thing. Metal I should thing, definitely. Yeah. yeah, definitely. If he's going to do that, bust my nut in there. Bust my nut. That's... Can I sit okay. on his shoulder? Is he that big? Can I sit on his shoulders? How big are you actually? Six six. Hmm. It's not oh, massive then. then. No. It's bigger than you. Maybe. All right, all right. It's not about size. Than me, I think. It's what you do with it's it. About... Exactly. About the motion That's of the what ocean. What all the girls tell me anyway. So Mage Mac is going to be breaching the door then. Yep. Okay. Mage Mac, uh, if you can make me a strength check, please. Uh, I don't think I want to. Because you have none. I have a minus, minus one, maybe. Oh, can I sake. assist him with this? Nine! Yeah, yeah he, can he be the person at the front? So he's the cannon fodder, but Badgerak will add our combined You, you do know that door. Badger is, like, just because I've gotten bigger doesn't mean that my armour has got any stronger. You do realise this, right? Well, you're metal, it should be. My armor class is twelve. Oh my is it god! Just a strength check then Badger. Then? Yes, yeah, Sorry. just a straight, straight strength check from Badrak. I'm still well, a warlock. I'm not a tank. Okay, uh, Badger, so... I'll give you a hand. Go for advantage. I got a good strength ball. Uh, are we, uh, are we doing? Badrak, Badrak is already helping Mage Mac. We'll we'll leave it at that for oh, now. Oh, okay. Um, so, both of you stride up confidently and get ready to boot the door 
open. House. Um, Badrak, you plant one hefty boot into the door, and it swings open easily to leave you standing there in full view of the silly. Mage Mac, you follow suit. You go up and you boot the door, and it just moves a little bit, and you have to kind of like push it the rest of the way just to open it. It wasn't quite as dramatic, but the door is still open. And the group of you... I'm confused as to why we have to open the door twice, to be honest. There's two doors. Swings. Blitz. And as you're standing there, Vasily looks up and goes, Ha! You thought you could follow me here? Guards, deal with them! Attack! I'm going to need everyone to roll for initiative, please. Take this sausage, man. (laughs) Oh. You like apples? I'd like these apples. <laughs> what a waste of a twenty. Now you say that but when he sees that hot tub full of tea flints, he'll be in there first. <laughs> I mean, That's a real. it's a risk I'm willing to take. Yeah. Uh, right. So. I just want to point out that that's my second nat twenty of the day. What is it? My first roll was a nat twenty. I'll have you know, I've had at least one nat one. <laughs> I've had, like, the the, my, last, like, for me. my last five rolls have been below ten. I don't think I mean, I've had purely, a roll above like <laughs> this fourteen purely, all game. Purely, I mean, like purely on in probability, I should have rolled above a of a ten by now. It's fifty fifty, isn't it? Sure. Fifty fifty. Yeah. About three fifty. Yeah, three fifty. But your odds aren't aren't going to increase because you've rolled again, is it? It's still going to be fifty fifty. Okay. Okay, so let's run down the order then. Badrak, what did you get? 17. 17, thank you. Faye? 12. Excellent. James? 13. 13. Mage Mac? 14. 14. And finally, Relaxio? Glad you asked, Tom. 22. <laughs> Beautiful. Okay, so as you've booted the door down, uh, you can see two of these swirling giant cloud form figures carrying these huge swords have now moved in from the sides of the room and taken up a sort of defensive stance in front of Vasily. Um, So, first up, we have got Relaxio. Relaxio. Um, Here we these go. guys are probably about 30 feet in front of you. Sounds good to me. <clears throat> right. Mm. Well, I think I'm going to be cheeky. Just go straight in with an attack on my... with my fang, I think. Excellent. On the one on the left. I'm going to go for the left one, Tom. The left one, certainly. If you can roll me... Um, Roll to hit, please. I would love to. And I went for a 17 to hit, Tom. 17 hits. Roll me some damage, please, my man. And I believe it's a 5. Fantastic. So you swing the fang of Meshork, and as it glides through the air, it just carves through this, this figure. And you can see... Although it doesn't it doesn't have a real form to cut, you can see the edges of the point where the blade entered, carried through and exited its form glow lurid green briefly before swirling back into reform. It definitely, you didn't feel it hit anything, but you certainly got the sensation that it, it, it connected and did something. Okay. Well, I'm going to go for my second packed weapon attack. Yep. 
Oh. Good old Assassin's Creed. Yep. And bang. That was only 11. Uh, 11, unfortunately, that misses. Oh dear. So this swirling form just manages to lean itself just out of the way and just, just about dodge your attack. Uh, uh, spaghetti -o. Okay. So, uh, next up we have got the um, swelling form itself. And it raises its scimitar and swings down to strike you. Relaxio. Uh, what's your armor class, please? 16. 16. So it brings down the scimitar, slams it into the ground, missing you, and as it tries to bring it back up again, it connects into your chest. Ouch. And you take... Uh, you take 13 points. Damn, son. Damage. Ouch. Awesome. Okay. Whilst watching this, you can see that Vasily has started to get to his feet and he's holding his hands palm up at either side of him, and you can see that the air currents around his hands are starting to swirl and coalesce together. Um, next up, we've got Adrak. Uh, followed by, I should be starting reading this out. So, Badrak, you're up. Mage Mac, you're on deck. Badrak, what would you like to do? Well, I'm going to fly into a rage and say, ruin my day at the carnival. That's fair. That's valid. <laughs> you are now raging. I am then going to rush the right hand one. Excellent. With a morning star. Why not? Fantastic. And we'll go for a swing at him. And completely fucking miss. Um, yeah, that's nine to hit. So the morning star, you swing, and it just misses. Well, I will go in with my second attack. <laughs> Excellent. Go for yep. a backswing. <laughs> yep. I could spell that. Is. Uh, so 16 to hit. 16 hits. And that will be 8 silvered piercing damage. 8 silver piercing damage. Thank you. So as the... <clears throat> as the silver form of the Morning Star strikes through you can see again similar to what uh relaxer experienced is that the the head of the morning star travels through the form of this um creature slightly differently though you can see that it carves a much wider path than the head of the morning star itself through this figure before the currents circulate and just re can sort of coalesce back together I also miscalculated that. It's 10 damage because I forgot I was raging. <laughs> that's fine. Can we tell they're actually taking damage if that's what we're seeing? Because that probably isn't very obvious, is it? We'll just see the currents moving, basically. That's all you can see at the moment. Okay. Um, okay, Badrat, that's the end of your turn. That ends my turn. Okay, so this creature is not too pleased with you. And I'm not too pleased with it and ruined my day. It holds both of its arms back and you can feel the wind around it starting to swirl and build. And I need you to make a strength saving throw, please. That's a 27, not 20. Okay. So... So you would take as you as you feel the wind start to build up, you kind of brace yourself against it, and as you're buffeted by the wind, uh, you take nine points of bludgeoning damage, half down to four because you are raging. Excellent. Okay. 
Okay. Uh, next up then, we have got uh, Mage Mac. James, you're on deck. Mage Mac, what are you doing? You're muted. I knew this. <laughs> he does that. Um, I really wanted to do summon lesser demons, but I don't think I have the items to do it. Because I need some blood or something, so... I shall do... Oh, we want spells again. Um, I think we'll just go with a cheeky Eldritch Blast, I think. Oh, uh, why mess Welcome with back. a classic? Why, why <laughs> not? Cool. Go for it, then. It's the Eldritch, isn't it? Uh, it's exclamation cast. Cast, I think. Ah, uh, okay, that's fine. Yes. Da -da. Uh, to hit, 23. That definitely hits. And my damage, whew, nat one. For one. Is that right? Mm -hmm. I think you actually do more than that because don't you have that thing that adds your charisma modifier to Eldritch Blast that the Avro bot doesn't remember? Yeah, is it better for me to just roll it on? Yeah, but look, oh. just check on your character sheet, see what the damage is listed as for Eldritch Blast for me, please. So it says uh, 600 feet uh, plus 6 and then roll a d10 plus 2. Okay, so you would actually do 3 three damage off of that rather than just 1 damage. Yeah, for some reason Avery doesn't calculate. You've got that bonus feature that adds your charisma modifier to your Eldritch Blast. So, as you uh, raise up your staff and, and let loose an Eldritch Blast. Um, what emerges, it initially surprises you. You're used to it having this sort of very um, green, sickly hue to it. The energy that now comes forth from the staff is bright gold. And it just Beautiful. strikes this thing square in the chest. Which one were you going for? The one on the left or the one on the right? Sorry. Uh, the one on the left. The one that everyone else is attacking. Excellent. Thank you. And I think... Well, I attack the one on the right uh, to find Dorit's attention. Yeah, so actually, as you cast it, you can see the beam that emerges from your staff splits and then starts corkscrewing together. And you see two beams of energy strike this thing in the chest. Um, because I didn't, didn't realise that now you're fifth level, Eldritch Blast casts twice. Um... I've also got Agonizing Blast as well, which adds two damage to the damage it's dealt on. Yes, that's your Charisma modifier. So, where you rolled the one for damage, should have actually been three for damage, and because you cast it it's two beams, hits for six damage. I like the fact that you nat won that and still did six damage. Eldritch Blast, man. Not to be sniffed <laughs> ass. <laughs> and Eldritch as you Blast see... As you see these two points of golden light pierce the uh, the creature's form, you see that its entire body is suffused with this golden light, and it sort of shudders before kind of recovering, and you notice that it is, as it sort of stretches its form out to react and then return back to normal, you notice that its form sort of diminishes slightly. It appears to be slightly smaler than it was before. I can also reduce the creature's speed by 10 feet until the end of my next turn because of Lance of Lethargy. Yep. Yep, so yeah, its uh, its speed is now reduced as well. Um, I've just noticed you've got like so much Eldritch Blast buffs. Um, yeah, that's what you, I was on about. You also have Grasp of Hadar, which means you can move it in a straight line 10 feet closer to you if you wish. Uh, how far away is it to me at the moment? It's about 30 feet away. I think I'll just leave it where it is. Fair enough. It's fine. Cool. Um, anything else on your go with your impossibly buffed Eldritch Blast? I don't think I've got a, second, a secondary... Of anything, um, I don't really feel the need to move. I could probably move away, actually, probably about twenty feet if I can. 
Uh, that would take you back outside of the building. Yeah, stuff like that. I'll just stay where I am. No worries. Okay, so... Next up, then, we have got James. Faye, you're on deck. James, what would you like to do? Which one's... Um, this is to me, or are they both equidistant? The, from where you are, they're, they're, they're pretty much equidistant to you. Okay. Um... I've only attacked the one on the right to draw its attention, basically. Yeah. yeah, I think I'll go for the one on the left. That's probably slightly more damaged. So we'll um, attack that with my rapier, please. Okay. 27 to hit. That hits. It. Oh, it's a it's nat a crit. 20. Crit yes. 20. Okay, so for just the base damage on your rapier, then, please. Um. Roll me no, dice. Probably it, nine, I think. Yeah, it, sorry, it's already done. It says it's eleven. Okay, um, that does oh, it wrong. Right. Yeah, it does it. It does it differently. So <laughs> if we take the the way that Avray's rolled it, you rolled uh, the highest roll you got was a five. So we'll double that. That's ten plus four piercing. So, so that's 14. fourteen piercing damage. Plus uh, that. colossal slayer. And it's my D8, but I only rolled a 2, so uh, 16. Okay, thank you. So, is he still alive? So, as you run in and you take this one massive strike with your rapier, you feel like you, you actually feel some resistance on this. Um, and again, as you bring the rapier out the other side of the the form you see some of the like clouds trail with it and then just evaporate away at the side and as it sort of tries to coalesce its body back together again you see it shrink and diminish slightly okay. here um, comes the old ranger with about four billion attacks now and i got bonus attack yeah, right attack and say, bonus attack um, <laughs> uh, is my i've taken the attack action i will attack i'll take my second attack action sorry which yep. is 15 to hit. That hits. Um, does I instead of one. Um, oh, come on. 13 damage. And 13 my bonus. Yeah. Is that 13 total? Yeah. 13 total. Excellent. So again, shit on the D8. Second rapier comes through. And again, you see the same um, same pattern of behaviour. The rapier strikes through, draws out a certain amount of cloud, and again, as it tries to recover, you see it diminish ever so slightly. And I use my bonus action, because I'm twin. Uh, 14 to hit. Uh, that misses. Olix. Okay. Um, oh, <coughs> I think that's me done, actually. Okay, cool. So next up, we've got Faye. Uh, Relaxio, you're on deck. Faye, what would you like to do? How far away are they? Oh, so they're about thirty. <laughs> each one of them is about thirty feet away from you. Okay. Um, I think I'm just going to go double crossbow. Yep. Mm -mm -mm -mm. 16 to hit. 16 hits. Roll some damage, please. Which one are you attacking, sorry? Um... Got the one on the left that's getting pretty badly picked on, the one on the right that Badrak is soloing. I'll go for the Badrak one, then. Okay, cool. Uh, six damage on the first one. Okay, so the first crossbow bolt. You see it sort of fly at full speed towards the target and then as it hits this thing you can see it slow and there's this like wake behind it as it sort of carves through and then hits full speed again as it travels out the other side uh, i got 23 to hit on my second one cool that also hits more damage please more damage. Uh, that'd be five damage Excellent. So again, the same same weird path happens. It flies true, hits the target, slows down as it goes through, creating this sort of void 
behind as it travels through this this cloud creature and then as it sort of coalesces and heals over the open wounds you can see it diminishes and grows smaller um anything else on your turn that is it excellent so relaxio you're up relaxio relaxio you're on, I'm gonna, you're on deck. Relax here. I'm gonna, I'm gonna attack him with the vampiric touch. Ooh, vampiric touch, lovely. Um, let's have a look. I spell that wrong. Is it not an attack? Is it a spell? It is Even a spell. Though... Yes. It's under... yeah, so it'd be exclamation cast vampiric. <laughs> well, here we go. Nope, it's not working either. I'll use D and D Beyond. Um, and it's ninety twenty-five to hit. That definitely hits. Uh, if you can roll me some damage for that, please. I would love to, Tom. It's rolled me fifteen damage. Okay. So, as you hold up your hand, holding your um secret wrist-mounted pack blade it is suddenly wreathed by this dark green shadowy energy and you just plunge it straight into this creature and you can feel the energy pulse out and then return to you and again it this this creature doesn't appear to be able to vocalize in any way but it, again it, it str its whole form contorts as if it's in pain and then recoils back together again shrinking slightly in the process um, so, how much damage was that? Sorry, I got lost in my own... It was 15, story. Tom. Okay. Okay, so, creature takes 15 points of damage, and you take 7 points of healing. Thank you. Yeah, I would have... And as it sort of comes back together, in addition to do a sort of diminished form, you can see it's sort of... It's slumping forward slightly. If Good. a creature made of clouds could slump. Um, anything else on your turn? Um, I don't think I can, as it stands. Okay. I feel like that is my turn. You get two attacks now per turn, and you also get double attacks, don't you? No, because it's not an attack; it's a spell. Ah, uh, yeah, I suppose. Yeah. Okay. Even though it's not actually shown up as a spell, it's shown up as an attack. No, it's a, it is a casted spell, but I can cast it every move without having to use another pact. Fair enough. Okay, so um, it is now the creature's turn, and it is going to take a swipe at Relaxio first of all uh, with its scimitar. Um, but <laughs> yeah, it is clearly feeling under the weather um, as it completely whiffs it over your head. As it brings it back, it tries to strike at James. Uh, James, what's your armor class, please? 17. 17. Again, this thing is clearly damaged as it, it just can't find its mark on either of you. Um, so, next up, we have got the main man himself, Vasily. Um, those of you who haven't dived in yet, so that's going to be Faye and Relaxio. I need both of you to make me a strength saving throw, please. Did you mean Mage Mac? Because I'm in the fog. Sorry, yes. Mage Mac and Faye. Wisdom, did you say? Strength saving throw for oh, both sorry. of you, please. Can't wait to see Mage Max. <laughs> Uh, 13. Wow! <laughs> 19. So in your face, Relaxio. That's 20. Well done. Fantastic. So, yes. you both of you feel the air around you start to swirl and spin really violently. And Faye, you are lifted off your feet and pulled up into this whirlwind and starts to move towards Vasily. Cool. Okay. Uh, Badrak. 
you are up. You are still raging. Um, Mage Mac, you are up on deck. Badrak, what would you like to do? I'm going to take a few more swings at this fucking cloud. <laughs> Go right ahead, my man. Uh, it's an 11 to hit on the first one. So unfortunately, the first one misses. The swing, the strange movement of this creature it catches you a little bit off guard and you, you just can't quite find your mark. Second attack. A nat 20 to hit. 27. <laughs> that hits, and that's going to be some tasty crit damage, I believe. Uh, well, we'll just go with what is rolled. In. So that's uh, 12. 18 damage. Oh, and then I get to add extra because it critted. Yep. 18. Uh... It's like I get to roll. Where is it? Somewhere in here. Class of something. Shows you how much this happens. Uh. <laughs> it's so infrequent, but when it happens, it's ah. awesome. Um. So what was I? I was on what? That's twelve. So on 18, and then I got to roll another 1d8. Twenty-two. Twenty-two. Thank you. Oh, damn. <laughs> so yeah, as you bring, is this with the Morning Star again? Yeah. Yeah. So as you bring that round, you just absolutely scream as you whip it through. And this one just takes, again, similar to um, what James had seen, is you just carve this huge chunk of wispy cloud out of this creature and send it flying up into the rafters. And as it starts to coalesce its form back together, it is, again, shrinking in size. That's where you go, oh, I really wish you'd use the great axe. <laughs> <laughs> That's all I can do this turn, sir. Okay. So, it's gonna. It's not. It's not too pleased with this behaviour. It's. Uh, it's gonna try and get. Get even with you. So it swings the scimitar at you. And what's your armor class? Nineteen. Nineteen. It hits. Oh. So the first strike comes whipping down onto you. Just about managed to dodge out of the way, but the tip of the scimitar cuts a nice little chunk out of you. Um, you take 13 slashing damage, reduced down to, what's it going to be, 6. Okay. Uh, second attack comes in as it brings the scimitar back up, and that hits you again. And this time you take. So that again, the first attack still throws you off guard. The second one takes advantage of that, and you take 16 points of slashing damage, reduced down to 8 because you are raging. Thank you. Okay, next up then, we have got Mage Mac. James, you're on deck. So, Mage Mac, you've just seen uh, Faye lifted off her feet into a whirlwind about 5 feet in front of you. What would you like to do? Uh, quick question. You know, when I reduced its speed by 10, does that mean that it's um, it would have had less... It wouldn't have attacked an hour, it would have attacked later? It was its movement speed. Oh, uh, okay, right. It doesn't move so it's about 5 feet in front. Cool, so... Um... Okay, so you said it's about 5 foot in front of me? Yes, yeah. Faye, Faye's about 5 foot in front of me and has just been picked up by this whirlwind and is being moved... Not in Kansas. To towards uh Vasily. The as, uh as it... the two other creatures are still about thirty feet away from you. As it's in range, I'm gonna um Shoot use Faye. a green flame blade. Okay, on which target, sorry? The one in front of me, because it's the only one that I can hit because it needs to be within so, ten feet. Yeah, sorry, the uh the whirlwind in front of you that's picked Faye up is not a creature, it's just a whirlwind. Oh, it's just a, just a whirlwind. Oh, yeah. I don't care then. You can just stay in the air. 
<laughs> um, I will use Eldritch Blast on the same target that Relaxio is hitting. Okay, yep. Yeah. Cool. Da -da -da -da. We got a 22 to hit. That hits. Roll some damage, And please. I've got... It says 10 on the thingy. What did so we do you, last time? So you do 10 damage, yeah? It says 1d8 of 10. Uh, 1d10, 10. 10. Okay. So it's doing 20, isn't it? Because it hits twice. Uh, yeah, and it doesn't take... it For some reason, it still doesn't take into account your um, charisma modifiers. That actually does 24 points of damage. In your face. So as, again, you raise your, your staff up and these two twisting bolts of bright golden energy just streak straight across the room and strike the um, this wind creature. And again, um, its entire body is suffused with this golden light as it um, contorts. Oh, yeah. um, I want to pull it forward. I want, it, I want to pull it toward me as well. Okay, cool. So that creature is now being pulled between Mage Mac, uh, between Relaxio and James, coming towards you. Um, um, yeah. I was going to say, Relaxio and James, there may be something you can react to there once uh, Mage Mac's turn is finished. Just a heads up. Um, I also want to use a. Um, the healing light as a bonus action. Yep, certainly. Who would you like to use your healing light on? Who's taken the most damage? Because I kind of half paid attention. <laughs> I don't think I've not taken any yet. You're just floating in the air. No one cares about you. Yeah, no. It's either me or relax you. Yeah. Well, I've only took no the heals on. I've only got six damage of mine. Right, then. I've probably taken the most damage though. Okay, so I'll put it on to Badger. Okay, and how many of your healing? How many dice are you using? Because you can use up to two. Um, how much damage have you taken, Badger? Uh, what's that? Uh, like eighteen or something. Like that? Yeah, I'll use two. Okay, cool. So if you can roll me two d six, please. Four. Four total. So, um, you then aim your staff towards Badgerak, and these two pulses of these two golden orbs pulse out of the staff and connect to Badgerak's back. And Badgerak, you feel this sudden warm surge as, as your wounds start to, to heal back together and you recover four points of damage. Oh, from that. Um, and Majmak, if you can mark me off two uses of healing light, please. Cool. Um, so, anything else on your turn? That's it, thanks. Okay. Um, so, James and Relaxio, the elemental creature was pulled past you, if you would like to react to that in any way. Like an attack of opportunity? Uh, I mean, there is certainly an opportunity for you to take an attack at this point, yes. You mean like attack of opportunity? Almost as if it was that exact wording, yes. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I'm up for it. Cool. Um, so, if you can both make me a single attack roll, please. How do we do that? Is it melee weapon of your normal. choice? Oh, I could use my pack weapon. Yeah. A bollocks. Or my hex. All right, I'm going to use the hex weapon. Yep. Which I scored an 18 to hit. That hits. And he's going to do seven damage. Okay, so as it's pulled past, you just swing out with is that with the fang? It is my fang, yes. It is the fang, and you just carve a chunk out of this creature again. There's a just another wisp of of its form is just torn away as it starts to diminish in size, still suffused in what appears to be silent agony with this golden light as it's pulled towards. Mage Mac. 
Uh, James? I only rolled a 12. Unfortunately, you, you don't quite manage to connect with the rapier on that one. Ah, well. Okay. Ah, well. Wouldn't make much difference, Might though. Go. It's now your turn. Faye, you're on deck. James, what are you doing? I'm going to try and hit the bastard. Fair enough. Trying the it. operative word. Uh, 20 to hit. That definitely hits. Go for some damage. Uh, one second. Uh, 15. Excellent. So, as the rapier slices out, again, you carve out a nice, decent chunk from this creature. And as you do, it completely shatters its form. The scimitar clatters to the floor as this entire creature just disperses into the ether. Hey, am, I, am I able to skitter across and use my second attack and bonus action attack on the remaining creature? Uh, so you're going for the second creature or are you going for Vasily? Um, I'll go for the second creature that's attacked Badger. Go it's for more it. Okay to, I was asking if I can stab, jump, stab. Yeah. Okay. Um, 20 to hit again. That definitely hits. Roll some damage. And that is... Ooh. Um, 13. Fantastic. So after you've succinctly dispatched the first creature, you then leap into the air and just glide over, bring your rapier straight into the form of the second one, and again just carve out a chunk of this ethereal mass that's making up its body. Um, it is now starting to sort of slump forward a little bit as its body re uh, rebuilds itself. You can see it sort of the, the torso part of it is kind of slumped forward and it, it's not breathing per se but it's still sort of expanding and contracting in the manner that almost looks like it's out of breath at this point. Um, a bonus action to attack was only an 11. So I assume that misses. Fortunately that misses, yes. So is that the end of your turn? Um... Yes. Okay. So, Faye, you're up. Relaxio, you're on deck. So, Faye, you're currently uh, bound up in this um, mm. cyclone at the moment. Um, if you can make me a another strength, uh, well, if you can make me a strength check, please. Just a normal strength check. Yes. Yeah. I've just realised I'm pretty sure I used a D12, is it? Um, instead of a D20 earlier. I okay. thought the 7 looked different. <laughs> da, 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 da. Would be... 22. Fantastic. So, as your body is sort of being whipped around um, by these strong winds, you manage to pull one of your sickles and just bury it into the floor to anchor yourself and you free yourself from this whirlwind as it continues to move on without you inside of it. So you are now free to act. You are moved probably about 15 feet forward. What would you like to do? I've got a, a cat attacking me like mad. Um, uh, trying to save the feet. Uh, I would like to do some more crossbows, please. Cool. Go Actually, for no, it. do you know what? Let's get closer and I'll do a, double, uh, a quadruple sickle combo. Oh, the quad sickle tickle. Mm. Oh, yes. That, yeah. Cool. Go for it. 18 to hit. 18 hits. Roll some damage, please. Nine. You. So the first sickle carves through and again just whips a chunk of mist out into this, this creature's body. Second attack. 15 to hit. Also hits. Roll some damage, please. 
six. Okay, so the six, uh, six damage, sorry. Yep, so the second attack just carves through again, just whips a chunk of mist out of it. We're going for uh, second set of two attacks? Yeah. Cool, again, roll to hit, please. 27. That hits, is that a crit? No. Oof, we've just got a really badass modifier. Yeah. <laughs> cool, yep, so, uh, yep, that, more, more damage. Give me more. Uh, seven. <laughs> Seven again. It's just this furious onslaught of blows, just carving bits and pieces out of this thing. And finally, uh, seventeen. Again, still hits. Final set of damage. Seven. Fantastic. This thing is now about the same height as Badrak, whereas before it was probably about twice as tall, and it is looking fatigued you wouldn't say it's injured but it's certainly much much smaller than when it first started out and it looks like it is struggling to to stay upright okay is that the end of your turn yep fantastic okay relaxio you're up Ooh. Bad uh, on I'll, deck. i'd like to go for the big man tom but before i do that i'm gonna cast armor of agav yep Cool. Uh, which I believe now gives me 15 temporary health. It does, I believe. Yes, yeah, 15 now. temporary health. Perfect. Um, and then on my second action, which would be my bonus, yep. I'm going to use Hexblade Curse. Okay. Yeah, so I'll choose one creature I can see within 30 foot. And I curse that creature for one minute. Curse. Any against the cursed target, I gain a plus three bonus to damage rolls. If I score, I can score a critical. If I score a nineteen or twenty. Okay, so who are you placing the hexblade curse on? Sorry. On uh, the big blue. On big blue. Cool. Mm. Um, do they need to do anything to resist that, or is it just just? No, it's just a curse. So it only it only takes effect if I hit them. Okay, so yeah, um, you have now cast that. You feel um, the, the the eldritch energy that Mashork has granted you. You feel it is now focused on creating this conduit directly to your target. Yeah, I do. Yeah, you do, buddy. Cool. Um, is that the end of your turn? It is the end of my turn. Okay, fantastic. Okay, it is now the big man's turn. And he is going to start moving the cyclone towards. Actually, no, he's going to get rid of the. Get rid of the cyclone. He's definitely aware that you have placed a curse on him, so he's going to stand up and start striding towards you. And he has drawn a much more elaborate-looking scimitar than the ones that the other guys yeah. have been uh, dealing. And you can see crackling along the blade is this like electrical energy. And he's going to try and take a swipe at you. Has he passed by any of us to get to him? No. no. So lay out from the door to the back of the room. There's you guys, two guard creatures, a silly at the very back. Okay. And a silly is a silly is strode straight forwards up the yep. middle. Yeah. To me, who is straight I'm the furthest person. Straight towards. <sighs> okay. Straight towards relax. Yeah. He's doing a series of test swings of this scimitar through the air before lunging at you. And um, what's your armor class now with armor Agathus on? It's still 16, my armor class. 60. Oh, yeah, it's bonus hit points, isn't it? Yeah. Okay. So, you feel the blade connect. Falk. You take... 
Uh, as you feel the, the, the blade actually pierce your body, you take 13 points of slashing damage Ouch. from oh. that. And in addition, as you feel the electrical energy crackling through the blade and discharge into the body, you take an additional three points of lightning damage. Ouch. Well, as I had armor of Agathis, uh, the big blue man takes 15 damage. Fantastic. And, nice. and then I'm going to do a reaction of Hellish Rebuke. Hellish Rebuke. So as he does, you can see like the as the, the no, blade no. contacts no. you, you can see the frost energy from Armor of Agathis just discharge from you and these ice crystals shoot out towards Vasily and just stab into his body and he takes the damage. Yep, yep. I was um, gonna use Hellish Rebuke, but as I went to draw the power to do it, I realised that I have worn myself out of spells. Oh no, <laughs> I thought no. Hellish Rebuke was a cantrip. Nope, it it's is a spell. A, yeah, it's a oh. spell slot level reaction. Yeah, my tiefling. I mean, oh, tits. I heard the tiefling right. had it. So, um, that is the end of their turn. So, Badrak, you're up. Um, you got yourself and uh, a very angry fae beating the shit out of this creature. Uh, James has just swept in at the uh, at the eleventh hour to uh, to try and get a kill steal on it. Classic America. Yep. Freedom I'm not gonna lie. I'm gonna, I'm gonna eagles <laughs> kill kill steal. <laughs> I'm gonna go with. I'm gonna keep beating on the thing right in front of me. Cool. Uh, That's fine. You are still I raging. Take another so go swing for it. at it. Yep. It's a 23 to hit. That definitely hits. Give That's me, 9 give me, damage. Give me some damage. And I shall swing again. Which is another 23 to hit. Give, oh. me, some, give me some more damage. And another 9 damage. <laughs> Fantastic. Ooh. So as you swing through with the Morning Star, you follow the arc of the weapon as you bring it down into the floor and as you look up and bring this second swing down to this creature it doesn't even connect its body has already shattered apart and you just catch the last glimpses of its form ethering away um so now me trying to whiff away a bad fart second, <laughs> yeah. use the remaining motion to just kind of like disperse the air mm. um at this point, Vasily shouts to the room, Enough! Cease this! And just gently floats back up onto his throne and looks down at you. Tell me, what does the Lady of the Mines want? Why would she send her assassins to come and take me? Can you I'd like to respond with uh, what the fuck now? The fuck? The fuck? Okay. Um, just while we round out the uh, the initiative order, uh, Mage Mac. Yes. Uh, you've just seen and heard all of this. What would you like to do? Kill something. <laughs> <laughs> it's fine. Oi, no. Interesting plan, Carton. Let's see if it pays off. Stop. What would you like to do? Yeah. <laughs> Genuinely attack both of Okay, so Silly's just decided to bugger off out, so we're no longer in initiative order. Is that fair to say? We're still just rounding out the initiative order. Um, okay. It's Mage Mac. Followed by James, followed by Faye. Right, so, so Mage Matt just needs to decide what he wishes to do. Yeah. If we're not fighting anything, then I'll just um, I'll just use my healing light on um, Relaxio because he seemed to have taken a thousand damage earlier. <laughs> I did. I did get a little. That's fine. Um, how many are you using? 
Um, as it's used as a bonus, can I only use it once, or can we're I still, use as we're still in in, as we're still running out initiative? Yes, you can only use it once. Thank you, Doki. So, so I'll two use two um at a time. Yeah, so I'll do. I'll use two on um okay. relax. Yeah. That's just not that much. Go ahead and roll me two d six, please. Me or Dave? Me. Uh, Mage Mac. Oh, oh wow. my God! You maxed both. Fantastic. So, uh, yeah, Relaxio, you take uh, 12 points of healing. And I have marked a healing light off on my thingamadoobie. Thank you very much. I'm full health again now. Fantastic. Um, Major Mac, anything else on your turn? Uh, I think I'm just going to sit down. Just chill? Yeah. Why mess with an established and functional plan? Cool. Uh, exactly. James. <laughs> what? Um, said, why has the something of the mines wasn't it i didn't quite catch everything he referred that he... to the lady of the mines lady of the mines does anyone do i know the lady of the mines is that a history check i can make or... yeah yeah make me a history check okay uh a 10 10 you have no recollection of this name yeah that doesn't surprise me um uh, that, that's kind of it I'll just ask him who is the lady of the mine and what makes you think we are sent assassins. Okay, that's fine. Your question has been asked. Uh, yeah. Anything else from yourself? Oh, no, that's it. I'll give okay. whatever's left. Cool. Uh, Faye, you're up. I'm going to scream, what are you talking about, fool? You brought us here. Okay. Now with that, we Have are you... out of initiative. Has Faye, by any chance, morphed into a different person? Is that person of lots of gold round their neck with a big mohawk and happens to be black now? <laughs> Who? And he has a severe, he has a severe uh, fear of flying. Yeah. Got it. I've just got it. Yep. Yeah. yeah. Yep, drink that milk. Um, <laughs> okay. So Vasily looks down and goes, You are the assassins of Estra, Lady of the Mines. This is not correct. No idea who that is, mate. Never heard of her. Make me a persuasion check, please. Did he say Astra? Like Vauxhall Astra, the fortune teller. <laughs> Possibly. Not Astra like stars, Estra. As in uh, Lady Estra. 18. 18. Okay. Um, yeah. He seems convinced that you good. don't know a damn thing about what he's referring to. So we just wasted two of his guards for no reason, basically. <laughs> stops and yeah. thinks about it. He says... So um, I am correct in understanding that you are you came to the carnival, but you did not come to kill me. Well, we have now. <laughs> it was an on. It was we've an down this path. We've, we've started down this path of killing you. And now we're going to finish it. I I feel I must apologize. Uh, there appears to have been a. Terrible, terrible misunderstanding. And what was going on in that car in the caravan <laughs> slash tent that we were saying? Caravan of love. <laughs> <laughs> there were some like house martins house? singing a song. House Mart I am I am very lost. I have dealt with your peoples many, many years, but What do you mean? Never us peoples. Yeah, yeah, we're not a people. <laughs> Yeah, we're not a people. The peoples, the, the short-lived ones on the material plane. The ones who create such beautiful things. Oh, but real people then, okay. I am beautiful. Look at me, I'm a big metal guy. Mm -hmm. I, I, I feel I must explain. Um, you know me as Vasily Goldtooth. Magnificent philanthropic uh, goblin leader of carnival. 
Um, but, but there's no there's no gold on your on your land. It's all copper. Ah. <laughs> I do not value treasure in gold. I value treasure in art and beautiful things that people can create and make. You think the gardens were made by myself? No, 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 no. You see, the talent contest, the talent contest at the carnival, I use this to, to advertise steal for... People. Not steal, not steal, not, not take unwilling. Uh, I, <laughs> you, you must understand that servitude is, is, is a bound fate of all living things. My my people, the the genie, we 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 seek to to ensure that this this servitude, this this service is is rewarding. We 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 take those with certainly I I take those with with great talent, but but no means with which to express this. And and I give them this palace, these these grounds, these the the tools at my disposal that they may. They may pursue their craft, their their create. Come, come with me, come with me, come with me. And he steps down from the 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 throne and sort of reduces in height so that he's about the same size as as Badrak now. And he leads you off to the side door where um you saw you uh where Mage Mac had seen the uh the people from the the carnival taken to. And as he opens it, it is this long gallery. And it is just filled. Every wall is covered in beautiful paintings and sketches and, and uh, various artworks. There are sculptures on pedestals dotted all around. And you can see that there are um, people of every different race that you can think of, all wearing uh, similar robes and... Um, they're all similarly dressed, and they're all wearing these like um, large gold braces. And everyone in this room is, is is working away at something. They're making something. They're painting something. They're crafting something. And he says, "This is my art gallery. All of the all of my servants here they uh, they are well cared for and and free to pursue their artistic craft. They can they can paint. They can they can they can sculpt. They can." They can make whatever whatever their inner desire is. I provide them with the materials, and in return I ask only that they provide me with beautiful things to look at and wonder and think about. Come, 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 follow me. He takes you out into the gardens, and again, it's the same thing. There's people of every different race, and some of them are, are, are growing flowers, tending to the gardens. Some of them are, are making the, the topiary uh, sculptures that you'd seen before. And he goes, here is, is where I bring the... The, the, the gardeners and the florists so that they may make my gardens beautiful that I might walk amongst them and, and smell the beautiful flowers and marvel at their colors and oh it is, it is, it is a fantastic way to spend a, a few hours simply lost in nature come come follow me further follow me further and he takes you around a few more areas there's this huge kitchen where people are experimenting with exotic spices and flavors and creating these beautiful dishes and desserts and sweet treats and there's a um there's like a, a tinkerer's chamber where people are, are, are building you know machinery and inventions that anything that they can think of they are given the materials to pursue their craft it turns to say i merely run the carnival there's a, a way to to give back some of the joy that I feel to the people of this world. And in return, I, I give the opportunity for, for those who, who have the creative spark, the joy to make things. To, to I give them the opportunity to pursue this. And in exchange, they, they remain here with me at the palace. I apologize. I, I believe you were, were brought here purely by mistake. I am... I am so sorry that, that, that for this unpleasantness with with my guards please allow, allow me to make this allow me to make this right for you i will i will send you home with with my, my blessing and 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 with uh, and he stops and thinks for a moment he goes i 
cannot offer you any of the artwork here. It belongs to the artists. They have created this so that others may view it and, and marvel at it. I may grant I you... I want to marvel at it. I may grant you one wish. Oh my god. Each. Huddle! No, 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 no. It is not within my power to, 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 to break reality as, as such. Sending you home, this is, this is, this is trivial, trivial magic, but... It, it saddens me deeply to, to think that I, I could have... My guards, well, clearly they may need, uh, may need some improvement, but to think that they could have hurt you or even killed you, it, it, it saddens me deeply. In return, it is within my power to grant a single wish to you. Simply name it. We need to confer. Please, please, take take all the time you need. And he snaps his fingers and um, the um, air creatures that you've seen earlier sort of bring out um, trays of food and drinks and comfortable chairs for you to, to sit down on in the gardens. Please, please, take your time. Enjoy Enjoy all of the beauty that I have here, and think about it. Time, time has no meaning here. I can return you back to back to the carnival moments after you left. Right, gang. My vote is for a massive fuck off dragon that's big enough to carry us all, so we don't ever have to travel. Crap. Not a big dragon. You got a tiny dragon on your shoulder. I've got two dragons. I've got one that's a cuddly bear as well. We could turn it. We could get that into real life, but bigger. Or you could Maybe keep he... yours and they could just magic one, but yeah. Well, if they can't magic one, then they need to well, just then, throw it. Yeah. Well, then, yeah. I was going to say, he could, magic, he could magic it so we all learn a new skill. Oh. Damn, there's so endless opportunities with this, Thomas. I want an enchanted weapon. <laughs> I want hoes. <laughs> Boat, boats and hoes. Boats and hoes. I feel like this might be a topic for a cocktail evening. <laughs> I, I think I agree. So many ideas. Is it, is Tom, is this going to involve the other two as well, this wish, or not? Fucking oh, fuck them the Got actually no, pulled to the genie's they realm. Didn't they didn't earn it. Alright. <laughs> um, uh, can we do say... it on the cocktail evening? I think that might be a bit better. Because I don't so know what can... our options are, really. Yeah, so we can all have a think about ideas and then debate across the five of us. Debate. As Vasily said, time is of no matter here. So, cool, then. We will end it for this evening on that somewhat delicious cliffhanger. Ooh, tasty, tasty treats. Delicious. Uh, thank you once again, everyone, for playing. Thank you, everyone who has been watching in chat. Um, belated happy birthday to M for last yeah, week. Yeah, <laughs> um, Yep. Um, so yeah, we're going to leave it there. I will pencil in a DM cocktail evening for some point this week so we can discuss things. Um, but for now, I will say uh, good night to everyone. Please say good night to the Dice Roll fans in chat. Good night. Good evening, guys. Good night. I will see you again. Soon. See you again soon. Bye bye. Bye bye. 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 bye.